Welcome. In this section, we'll combine the individual relationships we explored in the last section into the almighty ideal gas equation. With this equation, we can take any three of the following variables and solve for the fourth, pressure, volume, amount, or temperature. In section 10.3, we explored the relationships between the four variables listed in the table. In this lesson, we'll combine these relationships into the ideal gas law, commonly written as PV equals NRT. Note that this relationship only works for ideal gases. An ideal gas is defined as one in which the particles do not stick to each other, nor do the particles take up any significant volume. Just like the ideal body, there's no such thing as an ideal gas. However, in most circumstances, gas behavior is very, very close to ideal behavior. And we'll find that this equation is largely true for most conditions humans are used to. There are many ways to write the ideal gas equation, but these are the two most common. I personally prefer the bottom representation best because it shows that pressure times volume divided by moles times temperature equals a constant, which is R, the ideal gas constant. Although R is a constant, its numerical value depends upon the units used to measure P and V. This table gives the value of R for the three most common units of pressure. You will be provided with these values of R on the exam. However, you will need to know which one to use. Hint, just make sure the units match. Let's put this into practice. Calculate the volume of an ideal gas at STP. STP stands for standard temperature and pressure, which is defined as one atmosphere of pressure and zero degrees Celsius. Pause the video and try to calculate volume. In this kind of problem, we need to identify values for three of the four variables, which I've done in the table to the right. We also need to identify the correct value for R, the ideal gas constant. I picked the R value that has atmosphere, liters per mole Kelvin as its units to match the units of the given information. We'll plug these into the ideal gas equation and solve for our unknown V. The answer is 22.4 liters. But what? how much is 22.4 liters? What does this actually look like? 22.4 liters is a pretty big balloon, about five and a half gallons in size. That balloon contains exactly one mole of gas if it's at one atmosphere and zero degrees Celsius. The amazing thing about gases is that they all have the same volume at standard temperature and pressure. Whether it's helium, nitrogen, or oxygen, the volume of one mole at STP is 22.4 liters. The mass and the density of the gases are different, but their volume is the same. All right, time for a harder practice problem. Let's say you're enjoying weird Portland, Oregon, when someone gives you a helium balloon which you then take on a hike to the top of Oregon's tallest mountain, Mount Hood. What is the final volume of this balloon? Pause the video and give it a try. There are actually two ways to solve this problem. The first way is more straightforward, but takes a bit longer. In the first way, we'll calculate moles of helium in the balloon from the volume, pressure, and temperature given in orange. Then we'll take the amount of gas to the top of Mount Hood and calculate the volume from the information in blue. Pull the given values from the problem and make sure to convert temperature to Kelvin by adding 273. Also, make sure to use the correct value of R. Check that the units of R match the units for the other values. Then plug these values into the ideal gas equation and solve for N. The next step is to take this volume. 
The next step is to take this amount of helium to the top of Mount Hood. Put on your hiking boots and pull the new values from the part in blue. Did you notice that the units of pressure changed in this problem? Well, this just means we have to change the value of R to have the appropriate units. Plug it all into the ideal gas equation and solve for V. I calculated 20.5 liters. The faster way to solve this problem is to recognize that PV over NT equals the ideal gas constant, whether we are in Portland or at the top of Mount Hood. And since we're not taking any helium atoms out of our balloon, then the moles of gas remain the same too. In other words, imagine two PV over NT functions, one with the information in orange from the bottom of the mountain, and the other with the information in blue from the top of the mountain. Since both of these expressions equal R, which is a constant, we can set them equal to each other. At this point, I gather the given information from the problem text. I start with the initial conditions in orange. Notice that the number of moles is unknown currently. Then gather the information for the final conditions in blue. I'll have to convert pressure from tor to atmospheres so that the units match the units on the left. And although we still don't know the number of moles n, we know that it hasn't changed from the initial conditions. So I set n2 equal to n1. Then plug all these values into the central equation. Since n1 shows up on the denominator on both sides of the equation, we can cancel it out. This leaves us with an equation with only one unknown, V2. Solving for V2, I get 20.5 liters, the same value I got via method A.